Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Selling Greenville, your favorite real estate podcast here in Greenville, South Carolina. I'm your host, as always, Stan McCune. I'm a realtor here in the Greenville area. You can find all of my contact information in the show notes. If you need a realtor in the Greenville area or even outside of the Greenville area, I'd be happy to help you with all of your real estate needs. Um, my company has a relocations department for outside of the Greenville area as well. So just let me know. Contact information in the show notes. Um, just a reminder, as always, even if you don't use me as your realtor, you can support the show very easily. Hit that little like, subscribe button, comment, rate, review, whatever, whatever platform that you're listening or, or watching this show from, please uh, just hit that little like button, leave a little comment, leave a little review. It's not that hard, but it goes a long way with me. I notice those things and I really appreciate uh, for those of you guys who do that. Today, we are going to be talking about an exciting topic, uh, sellers dropping prices on their homes. Um, and it, at first glance, doesn't sound super exciting. But for me, I'm a bit of a data junkie. I'm a, a bit of a nerd. Um, I get excited about this kind of stuff because a lot of this stuff is not just out there in the public domain, right? The Greater Greenville Association of Realtors releases market stats every month. They have not yet released this month's, uh, which will essentially be March's, uh, March 2024's market stats. We don't have those yet. So we'll have to talk about that uh, probably next week's uh, episode. Um, but when they're doing that, when, they, when they're releasing that data, one of the things that they don't release is the uh, uh, amount of price drops that are happening and, and the data behind price drops. But we know a lot of price drops are happening. I had someone recently tell me who's looking to relocate uh, down here from the Northeast that uh, they're amazed by how many price drops that we have in the Greenville market. And that kind of got me thinking, are we seeing price drops that are greater than normal? What exactly does that look like? What does the data tell us? This is important uh, for both buyers and sellers, right? If you're a buyer, uh, you want to assess, you know, how many listings are, are dropping their prices. Um, and if you're a seller, uh, knowing what's happening on that front can help you to uh, more appropriately price a home. So here's what I did. I looked at the past six months and I analyzed the uh, the data for listings that have dropped their price the past six months. Then I took the exact same six months and looked at the data in 22 through 23, 21 and 22, 2019 to 2020 and 2018 to 2019. This gives us a good sample size going back uh, well before the pandemic uh, through today. And I think that that sample size can can really tell us uh, a lot about uh, what has happened historically and what is happening now. So we're going to start back in 2018 through 2019, basically the six months. Uh, if, if you want to think about it this way, think about, you know, we're in mid-April. I'm, I'm recording this. Um, I went back essentially uh, six months from uh, from the end of March for each of these. So think about the uh, these six months beginning prior to March 2019. That's the sample size that we're looking at here. Here's what was going on then. We had a lot of price drops back in 2018 and 2019. 34.28% of listings that sold. Okay, I only looked at sold listings. I did not look at listings that didn't sell. Um, listings that don't sell skew the data, right? Because a lot of those will have uh, price drops um, and then ultimately not sell. I didn't want to include those because uh, properties that don't sell uh, after they've had price drops w had to have been really, really overpriced or or would have had to have had really major problems. Um, and I don't want to spoil the data with that. Um, so I only looked at sold listings and in uh, the six month period of time that we're talking about from 2018 to 2019, 34.28% over a third of uh, of sold listings uh, had a price drop at some point, at least one price drop during the time uh, that they were listed. The median price drop was $10,000. Okay, so if if, uh, if you had, and, and that number, by the way, does include all price drops in there. Basically what I took was the first list price and then uh, subtracted the final uh, final list price. Um, now, I didn't subtract out the final sold price, right? Because we are only looking at 
price drops, right? Not not the not how much less that the seller took. We already know that data. That data we do talk about in the GJR market stats. It's typically around 98%, right? Most sellers are getting 98% of uh of what they have a home listed for. And of of that sample size in 2018 to 2019, 34.28% of them got that after they had already reduced the price by $10,000. What about the same period of time from 2019 to 2020? Well, remember COVID happened in 2020. So I cheated a little bit for this date range and I took it back one more month so that we were basically taking the data from the end of February of 2020 and backed it six months from that because I did not want things to be skewed by all the data. You know, in March uh, of 2020, it was crazy because because people bumped up closings, realizing that uh, that lockdowns were were potentially happening. And then once lockdowns happened, basically, we had uh, several weeks of no real estate uh, until kind of people figured things out. So I, I avoided that just for this one date uh, uh, date range that we have here. Uh, but for this period of time, 2019 and 2020, uh, a, a little bit higher. And at this time in the market, rates were starting to go up. There is a direct correlation between rates going up and price drops going up. So uh, price drops went up to 36.82%. Uh, so that is uh, basically a 2.5% uh, increase from the year before. Uh, but the median price drop remained around right at $10,000. Um, and so here's what we have. Basically, those two years, we have the number hovering, let's just call it 35% of new listings, or, or not of new listings, 35% of listings that sold had to drop their price at some point uh, for the period of time between 2018 and right before COVID. Um, let's go into uh, the period of time right after that. I'm going to skip ahead. One thing I didn't do is I didn't do uh, 2020 through 2021. Again, that was a weird period of time. I don't want to skew the data with all of this, all of the weird COVID stuff. By the time we get to 2021, uh, now we have People by now have gotten used to the pandemic. They understand, you know, what's going on. And, and now we can kind of give more accurate details. So let's look at 2021 through 2022. Um, during that period of time, price drops went all the way down to 16.27%. So we had a 20% reduction uh, between 2019 and 2021 in the number of price drops. Again, we're looking at the same uh month period of time. However, the price drops that we did have were higher. The median price drop was 15,000, but it was just on a much smaller number of a uh, much smaller percentage of listings. And remember, there were a lot of new listings coming on the market during this period of time because a lot of people were were moving and selling trying to take advantage of the hot market. So the fact that it was 16.27% betrays the fact that there were substantially more homes sold during this time period. How many, you say? Well, I've got that data point too. 8,323. How does that compare to the sample size we just looked at from 2019 to 2020? It was only 6,656 that sold in, in that sample size. So not only do we have a smaller percentage, but we have a smaller percentage on much more homes that were uh, that were sold. Um, and like I said, the amount went up. The amount of the price drop went up to fifteen thousand. Um, I'm not exactly sure how to explain that. Outside of I can, for one thing, see that there were a lot more expensive homes that sold during this period of time. So that obviously skews the data. You know, I saw a home recently, uh, just yesterday, as I was kind of looking through some data, um, a home that was like listed for you know two million something that was advertising it had just dropped the price by fifty thousand dollars. Well. A fifty thousand dollar price drop is massive, unless it's a two million dollar listing. Then it's kind of a drop in the bucket, right? If someone can't afford a two million dollar house, if you only drop the price by ten thousand, they're still not going to be able to afford it. So at that price point, you have to make much bigger drops. So I think that that's part of what was happening here as well. I think probably part of it too was uh, what we had during this period of time was a lot of people that uh, you know when the market was so hot, they were listing their homes for way more than what they were worth. 
And then they would realize, okay, yeah, the, this home isn't worth it because all of my neighbors have already sold their homes and mine is still listed. And so they have to reduce the price uh, more dramatically. And so I think that that's part of why that number is higher. But the but the number of sold listings that had to have price drops went all the way down to 16.27% between 21 and 22. Well, then, of course, we had mortgage the mortgage rate shock that happened in 2022. And so we look at this data from 22 to 23, and it's like looking at a completely different market. The percentage of price drops on, on sold listings, by the way, the sold listings returned back down to 2019 levels. 6,896 is the sample size I'm looking at for this uh, six-month period of time. 39.62% um, of sold listings had price drops during this period of time. And the median price drop was 19,395, both dramatically higher numbers than anything we've seen. Basically 40% of listings and close to a $20,000 average or median uh, price drop on those 40%. Um, I'm just going to skip ahead to the last six months because the numbers are eerily similar. We just said 39.62% of listings uh, had price drops for this period of, for this six month period of time, 22 through 23. Uh, for the Previous six months, starting with the end of March of this year, it was 39.64%, almost the exact same number. So we're hovering right there in the high 39%, let's just call it 40%. 40% of listings right now that sell are having to drop a price. What is the median? It's 15,500. So the second highest number that we have on here. And, um, and so this is the environment that we find ourselves in Right now, people, buyers and sellers both need to understand 40% of listings are having to drop their price at some point. And on average, the homes that do drop their price, again, I shouldn't say average because it's not average, it's median. On median, um, I don't even know if that's the right thing to say, but the median price drop for that 40% um, is 15500 So there are some numbers to work off of. So if you see a home that has already reduced its price and it's only reduced it by say five thousand. You might have some room to to negotiate additional uh, price drops in addition to that because that is below the average uh, or, or median. I don't know why I keep doing that. Below the median price drop. Um, so those are. I'm not going to get into a ton of of the strategy because really, uh, sh that's a, kind of a flawed example, right? Not every home is equal. Like I already said that a $2 million home having a $15,000 price reduction is a drop in the bucket. They need to, to reduce the price by a lot more than that. On the flip side, a $200,000 home reducing its price by 15,000 is a huge price drop, right? Because these things operate on, on more of a percent term uh, than anything. So um, keep that in mind as you, as you hear these numbers, but 40% of new listings right now are having price drops. Now, why is this happening? Well, buyers right now, and I've alluded to this in the past, but I'm going to, I'm going to go on a little bit of a rant here. Buyers right now are very, very picky. And I'll, I'll explain why in a second, but I want to give some examples of some of the things I've heard. These are just on homes that I've listed or showed the past uh, basically since the start of this year, since the start of 2024, things that I've heard people say about homes that they are passing up on. Um, here are a few examples. I don't like the neighborhood, okay? Understandable. But the home that I have in mind where I've heard this from people is a neighborhood that's in an established, quiet area in a great award-winning school district. I've had multiple people say, I don't like the neighborhood. It's it's a great neighborhood. Big yards, Quiet, like I already said, people walking around and not walking around because they don't have anything better to do. But like, you know, like single moms walking or I shouldn't say single moms, but like moms walking around with their kids and, and dogs kind of kind of neighborhood. I don't like the neighborhood um, is is what I've heard from some people overpriced. Uh, that's what I heard uh, from some for a home listed in the mid 300s uh, that needs some cosmetic work in a neighborhood that consistently sells in the 400s. How can you say, I'm sorry, that a home that only needs cosmetic work is overpriced when it is greater than fifty dollars or $60,000 less than what homes in that neighborhood are typically selling for? Crazy, crazy thing. But these are the things that buyers are saying right now. Um, here's another one. This, this one might be my favorite out of the whole bit, and I've got a bunch more that we're going to talk about. 
Couldn't handle the smoke smell. Obviously, a heavy smoker used to live there. This is for a home. This is feedback I got on a home that literally has a sign right at the front door that says no smoking or vaping near the house is allowed due to someone on oxygen living in the home. So there's literally no way that there was a heavy smoker in this house because literally the person living there was on oxygen and would not allow anyone that smoked or vaped to come into the house. I actually approached this agent about it. And this agent was like, oh, 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 oh. well, I, I know what I'm talking about. And what I had to explain to them uh, was that um, th what they smelled was uh, was a construction smell. And that's exactly what they smelled. They just agreed with me. They said, oh, I've got a background in construction, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, okay, if you had a background in construction, you would know that work has been done on this house recently, and the smells in the house are related to uh, to the work that had been done, not related to a heavy smoke smell. That was insane. Eventually, that agent, after talking to them, uh, they, they said, well, you know, our eyes were watering. It could have been a chemical that was used in the cleaning. Yes, that is very possible, but that's very different than saying that the home had a heavy smoke smell. That's an insane thing to say. Um, clearly, you've never been in a home that had smoke in it. If, if you think a home that's clean and has a chemical smell is smoky. Again, these are the types of things that we're hearing. Uh, too small. That was feedback I got. Um, and updates are the old style on a home in one of the hottest parts of Greenville, listed well below any of the comps in the area. It's listed below the comps in the area. The reason why is because it's small and because some of the, the fixtures are, you know, old style fixtures that, you know, that goes to the territory. You're getting a home in a hot area for below market value. What do you expect? Oh, by the way, I, I, I want to mention, I want to mention that uh, to go back to the smoke smell thing. So I, I took matters in my own hands. I went there. I was like, is, did someone walk through this house smoking? Right? Because I was just so shocked to get that feedback on a house that I knew for a fact had never had a smoker in it. So I went there, it didn't smell like smoke at all. I bought some air fresheners, put it in there, and uh, uh, a week later we we're under contract. So anyway, I, I just, I feel justified on that one. All right, go back to this. Um, here's another thing I've heard from buyers. Don't like that the garage can't be accessed from the interior of the home. For a house in a neighborhood that has many homes with either no garage or detached garages that require a lengthy walk from the house. Here we have an example of there's an attached garage, but it just doesn't have interior home access. Obviously, people aren't going to like that. But it's in a neighborhood where some houses don't even have garages or that the garages are even further away. Again, uh, people being nitpicky. Here's another one. Didn't like that the laundry room was in the garage. Nobody likes that. But this is in a neighborhood where all the laundry rooms are in the garage. If you want to move to that neighborhood, you have to do your laundry in the garage or figure out another solution. Here's another one. There's a dead animal in the backyard. I mean, really? This is not a home with a massive yard with tons of wildlife in it. If there's a dead animal in the backyard, uh, most people, obviously nobody likes to see a dead animal, but that tells you, okay, this is this is a neighborhood with wildlife. A lot of people love that sort of thing. And I mean, the, the backyard had huge mature trees, 100-year-old trees and whatnot. Um, and so, of course, there's going to be animals back there. And guess what? Sometimes they die. I had a squirrel drown in my pool uh, a few weeks ago. Disgusting. Yeah, nobody likes that. But to say that you're not going to buy a house because of that is insane. Um, another one. Ceilings feel low in a home with eight foot ceilings. Guys, eight foot ceilings is the standard. I know that, you know, new construction, they're typically uh, doing nine, 10 foot ceilings. But to say the ceilings feel low for eight foot ceilings is insanely picky. Passing up on a house because of that. Driveway is too steep for a home with a standard inclined driveway. Again, I got that from multiple people for a listing that, that did not have a steep driveway. I've had listings with steep driveways. I know what those look like, right? But this was not a home like that. There are some driveways that, you know, if you have a, a low vehicle, you're going to have struggles with it. That is not what this was. I couldn't couldn't believe how many people gave me that feedback. Numbers don't work for a multifamily property hitting all the usual income numbers that you would hit with any multifamily property. I don't know what multifamily properties are out there buying if the numbers don't work for, for this one that I'm talking about. Uh, but that is one that I've heard from a lot of people that either don't know how to run numbers or don't understand where the market is currently. Another one. 
I know this is a good deal for a turnkey property, but they want a great deal on a property that just needs some basic work. Good luck. That's what I say to you if uh, if you're passing up on good deals because you're looking for a great deal because you really just want a cosmetic rehab uh, that you can, you know, put some money into and and maybe get more rent or whatever, uh, whatever it is that you're shooting for um, at that point. Good luck. There's not a whole lot. If you're going to be that picky, there's not a whole lot for sale. You're going to have struggles. And of course, here's one, and this is the last one that we discussed last week in uh, on my show. I don't want to get a section, uh, get into Section Eight rentals because the Section Eight program is unpredictable. I had a whole episode uh, where I discussed that, so I won't uh, get into detail on that uh, right at this moment. Now, those are a bunch of examples. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I I could have kept going. I could have come up with with a bunch more. Like I was just sitting down thinking through this before recording this and and I mean these were all just coming and these are all from the past three and a half months. That's the insane part about this is that these are all objections I've gotten on my own personal listings on homes uh that people have been looking at in the past three and a half months. The market is just picky right now. Now I don't want to act as if buyers are just being unnecessarily picky. Okay. I don't want to just Throw buyers under the bus. I get it. I understand. They're facing the most unaffordable housing market in history. That is undeniable. This is the most unaffordable housing market in history, um, at least for people that are getting financing. For cash buyers, it's it's not an unaffordable market. But for people getting financing, it is the most unaffordable housing market in history. Um, and that is, in my opinion, what's spurring on all of this buyer pickiness. Think about it this way. A person who has bought a, uh, who bought a house a, f- a few years ago for, uh, let's just say, $200,000. And they had, let's just say, 3.5% interest rate. Right now, they are most likely looking at homes in, uh, you know, if they're looking to to move up from the house that, that they bought for 200000 a few years ago, they're probably looking at homes in the mid to low 300s. Uh, and they would have to, if they're financing, they would have to get a roughly 7% mortgage rate. The difference in monthly payment between this home they bought for 200,000 at about a three and a half percent interest rate to a home in the mid 300s at a 7% mortgage rate, the difference is gonna be about $1,500 per month to make that jump. Now, if you're currently living in a place that you like and you're about to pay $1,500 per month more to live somewhere else, you are going to be picky. Like that is going to happen. You don't want to add $1,500 $1,500 a month to your bottom line, in addition to adding the expenses of having to then also renovate multiple bathrooms, live in a neighborhood that isn't as nice as your current one, et cetera. You want to feel like you made a big step up to pay that much more money per month. Now, remember this too, and this is a very, very important context. A person who bought a home just a few years ago for $200,000 and is now looking in the mid 300s is barely doing more than a lateral move because the average home in Greenville, in the greater Greenville area, costs just a hair above 200,000 in uh 2020 so 4 years ago and now the average or the median is 300,000 so if you put yourself in the shoes of a buyer um you have to think about the fact that basically if they're moving up from a house that they bought in 2020 for 200,000 into a house that in 2024 is listed in the mid threes, it's barely a step up from what they currently own but they have to pay $1,500 a month more, that is a really, really hard sell for buyers. And this is why buyers are being picky because they're just like, man, I have to pay so much more to have an actual step up from my current living situation. Uh, and, and that's challenging, really challenging in this market for people that need financing. The other side of the coin is that it's still proving to be difficult to price a home that you're selling, right? If you're looking to sell a home, it is not an easy market to figure out what that home is worth. We've now had several years of very, very low inventory. So some neighborhoods just don't have a lot of comps and we're kind of throwing a dart at a dartboard. I I really try hard um, and I really pride myself in getting great comps and really figuring out what a home is worth. Um, But this is even challenging for me in this market. And so you have sellers and realtors just kind of guessing in a lot of instances what a home should be listed for. Um, And sellers right now are really grappling with the fact that the market isn't what it was a couple of years ago. I lost out on a a listing recently where I did a full 
CMA, comparable market analysis, um, and then concluded that the home should be listed for um, around 250. I was willing to go up a little bit above that, um, but I didn't recommend it just based on the state of the market. Well, after I sent the sellers all this information from the CMA, and I had very compelling comps. I had great comps. I was very confident in that price. Um, so I sent the sellers the CMA. This is after I'd met with them and looked at the home and all of that. I sent that to them and, and then didn't hear anything. And I knew exactly what was happening. Um, I didn't hear from them because they weren't happy with 250000 So, uh, So then not too long after that, um, I saw that, of course, the home was listed by another agent for $300,000. And and later, the people sent me uh, an email uh, thanking me for my time, which I appreciated, but telling me that they went with the other agent because that agent was willing to list the home for more than I was. Well, guess what? The home hasn't sold. I'd be surprised if it's even shown to anyone. And it won't sell for $300,000 because it is not worth $300,000. I would love to know if the agent that listed it for 300 actually did a CMA, actually looked at comps and actually like did any research to try to to determine the home value because there is no way that this agent came up with 300 unless they were just plucking numbers out of out of thin air. Um and I would say and I've said this on the show before, that agent did a major disservice to those sellers because they will most likely sell the home for less money than they would have had they listed it for the right price to begin with. Because what happens, we've talked about this before on here, uh, when you overprice a home, then you have to start dropping that price. And once you start having to drop that price, you end up, uh, you know, the home doesn't look good to buyers. And and uh, and they start to get skeptical and start to wonder, why are there all these price drops? What's going on here? Um, and, and then you end up usually selling the home for less than you could have if you had just priced it right to begin with. If a home is underpriced, Usually the market will bring the, the price up to where it should be by virtue of a bidding war. But if you overprice a home, all that's going to happen is it's going to sit on the market. You're going to have to drop the price. And then eventually someone's going to come around with a low ball offer and you're going to feel compelled to accept it because that you're wanting to sell the house and you're not getting any activity on it. Um, and suddenly you find yourself accepting an offer that was lower than you probably would have accepted, uh, would have accepted had you just listed it for the right price to begin with. So it's not just, I don't want to just blame buyers. I don't want to blame buyers at all because I, I sympathize with buyers right now. Um, sellers aren't completely to blame either because the market is weird right now, but sellers have to take this data into consideration too. You ideally don't want to be one of the 40% that has to reduce your price. If you can be in the 60%, that's better, right? If you're, if, if, I'm looking at your house to potentially list and I say, okay, here's the range, right? Let's say I'd say the range is um, the home could sell for somewhere between 300 to 320,000. If it were me, I would typically sell or, or typically list on the lower end of that price point because that is makes you more likely to be in the 60% group than the 40% group. Because let's say that you list it for 320 and then after a few weeks of no activity, then you have to reduce it to 310. Um, now you're going to have buyers come in with offers at 295. Whereas if you had just listed it at 300, you probably would would be getting, you probably would have gotten an offer pretty quickly at that 300 price point. So that's the logic there. And that's what's going on. Um, but there, there's a little bit of data and a little bit of anecdotal data that goes into this. Um, and a little bit of an art to go along with the science when you're, when you're listing a home. If you are listing a home, though, I explain all of this, right? If we're talking about uh, this information, I make it a conversation with my sellers. I don't just tell them this is what the home is worth um, and there's no conversation. Sometimes we have a conversation and they will, you know, my sellers will explain some different things and, and we'll kind of uh, do a little bit of a negotiation and then find kind of a middle ground. Sometimes that happens. Um and it, it just it depends on a variety of instances. Like I said, if there's a lot of comps in a neighborhood and we can really, uh, for a fact, determine like really, really uh, with with a high degree of certainty, that's the word I'm looking for. It, if we can determine the value with a high degree of certainty, then I'm going to be less likely to 
budge off of what I consider to be the value of the home because I don't want to cause a disservice to my clients. I don't like to have listings that just sit on the market for forever. Nobody likes that. It's bad for me as an agent. It's bad for my sellers that are selling. Um, and so sometimes I have to be like, no, if you want to go higher, like with this other potential client, that they just wanted a higher price, then I'm happy to say, you know what? The comps do not under any circumstances justify this price. I'm not willing to list it at that price. Um, but sometimes uh, there might be some other circumstances involved. And sometimes, uh, uh, you know, I, I might recommend a price and the seller says, let's go a little bit higher. I can still see that the comps could justify that little bit higher price. And I'll just warn them, this might put you into that 40% camp of people that have to reduce their price. And that's bad. But I'm going to do my darndest to market this property at the price that we are listing it at and try to, to bring you a full price offer or higher. So that's the way I approach it. Um, and hopefully that makes sense. And hopefully this data and some of these stories are helpful for you guys to kind of understand the state of the market. That's all for today's episode. My contact information is in the show notes. As always, please like, uh, like rate, review, subscribe, all of those good things. And we will talk again next time.